Hello healers and health seekers, it's me, Ichoda, healing with using medical medium information for 29 months now. This is Muffins the Pug. She's keeping me company today and she wanted me to hold her for the at least the first part of the video. Not going to be able to make it through <laughs> holding her. She's heavy, heavy pug. And today is Wednesday, so that means it's time for another What's Up Wednesday. And in today's What's Up Wednesday, I kind of have a topic. And the topic is, what's up with my skin? I know the answer. <laughs> but I'm going to talk about it. Anyway, winter. Winter, winter, winter brings with it dry air because you're inside all the time you don't go outside very much at least I for sure don't and the air inside is dry even with a humidifier in running it doesn't matter it's still dry and we're eating a lot more cooked foods at least I am I'm eating a lot more cooked foods which are not as hydrating and I am doing my best to take in more moisture more hydrating liquids but I'm actually not really taking in any more than I was in the summer when I was eating all of these hydrating foods. So I'm actually taking in less, which means my liver with its depressed function. Because in the winter, our livers know that it's winter and it actually suppresses the function of our livers just a bit. I don't know how much. <laughs> in addition to that, and then all the stuff that's going around in the air, all the viruses people catch and bring home and all that stuff. and my personal self, I have also been in having a little bit of a strep flare. My whole family is actually just kind of at different times. My son and I definitely are. So you might say, Ichoda, how do you know you're having a strep flare? Well, let me tell you. I have been in this body. <laughs> no, I have been familiar with my symptoms for, I guess, two years now. And so most of my EBV symptoms, the Epstein-Barr virus, are pretty much down. But I do still have shingles symptoms a little bit and strep symptoms. And for me, my strep symptoms vary, but they do include bladder issues and they include, you know, anything that has to do with the sinus. And for me, that also includes jaw pain because, you know, your sinuses are connected to your teeth and you can sometimes feel pain in your teeth when it's actually stuff going on in your sinuses. <laughs> She's snuggling in harder because she knows I want to put her down. She's getting happy. I can't hold her. My arms are going to give out. So also my skin, my skin, my skin, because of the acne that I get on my skin, that's another sign of strep in my body. And the dermatoxins coming up through the hepatic portal vein and sitting behind my skin until something says, hey, and kind of exacerbates them a bit, like depressed liver function or <laughs> not enough hydration or another virus, which is actually kind of what I think might have done it. Like I think my husband might have brought something home. He's the one who goes out the most because he goes out to work and he goes, does the grocery shopping and he does a lot of errands and stuff like that. So he's in the most places all the time and he brings home stuff sometimes. It's not his fault. He doesn't mean to. He is, my husband, to his credit, is a great germaphobe. He always does the like wipe the handles off of things. He doesn't touch anything. If he does touch anything, he washes his hands. He doesn't like mix and match, but you know, you still get exposure. And I think I, I talked about it a couple videos back and maybe even in the other last What's Up Wednesday that I was th thinking I was having a strep flare. So my strep flare. So this is what shows up. It shows up on my face. And I'm used to it. it. The thing is, is ever since we moved into this apartment, this has been happening on my skin. And I know the water here is not good. It's hard water. I'm guessing we have copper pipes because there's, it just is obvious that there's a lot of copper in it because of this. This is copper. Like all of the rosacea stuff, not the acne, but the rosacea is copper. So the red patchiness, that's copper coming out of my liver, my poor liver. And as I support my liver, liver you know, I'm supporting it and I'm doing my best and it comes out on my skin. And what can you do? I mean, that's just part of it. 
it has been ever since it just ramped up crazy when we moved in here and in the winter it just gets worse and what's happening right now because of the, all the dry is my skin is getting drier I can feel it and see it <laughs> obviously and my liver is having to work extra hard to try to keep this stuff out and filter this stuff out and it's doing its best and we are in a place where even filtered through the Berkey this water is crazy it's not good honestly I maybe I should just start buying Fiji water and drinking that and stop using the Berkey while we're here because that might be better for me <laughs> maybe I'll I don't know that's good that would be so exp I don't anyway luckily we're gonna move so you know we're gonna move in April so it's not that much longer and I just have to do what I can for my liver while I'm here now if you don't if you're not familiar with all of the information which now is literally voluminous information that the medical medium has put out on taking care of our livers I will link a bunch of it below but you all know that liver rescue came out his new book liver rescue and it is available you can if you can't afford it you can go to the library but it's on barnesandnoble.com it's on the other place that sells everything online that everybody knows about that I'm not going to mention because twice in a row they sent me a dirty book like not just like oh oops it got a little dirty but like we threw it on the floor in the warehouse and just rubbed it all over the floor and then put a bunch of dirt on top of it and then tore the cover kind of dirty like twice in a row the second one was worse than the first one so I got a refund and I went to Barnes and Noble brick and mortar store and got the book so that I could get a clean copy because this is ridiculous anyway but it is available online you can get it it's available in many many languages he also has been doing show after show after show on the radio show but also like pop-ups on Instagram and Facebook talking about the liver and what's going on with our livers and talking about specifically he's done a webinar on like acne rosacea and psoriasis he's done previous ones also on those subjects so I will link as much as I can find below in the link description box below but just know that this information is out there about our livers and what's going on and and how this stuff comes out on our skin and why it comes out on our skin and in no way whatsoever do I say oh I'm not healing or anything like that no I am absolutely still healing because of all of the things that have happened on this healing journey that have cleared up that have lessened and this is actually lessening too it's just that when winter came the lessening it was doing got less lessened <laughs> It is improving it is and my liver is working its butt off and the great news is is I know how to help it and I'm doing my best for my liver as well so that means like keeping the fats low eating the healing foods making sure I eat raw food with my cooked food and I'm almost to the part of the book I'm so close I'll probably get even get to it tomorrow um, where the three six nine cleanse is so I'm gonna get to start doing that Obviously, I'm going to wait till after the holiday, even though I'm not sure if we're doing something or not for the holiday. We might just use it as a relaxed day because my husband does go back to work on Friday. Plus, he's having a strep flare and his strep flare is causing such severe pain in his sinuses that if he eats or drinks anything, it causes searing pain. I'm pretty sure that's a strep flare because my son and I are both also having a strep flare. So I think that my husband's is flaring too Whew. but I really feel for him so obviously I'm not gonna make a bunch of food if he can't eat it what's the point in that <laughs> especially when I can just throw myself together a nice salad and a couple of smoothies and call it a day <laughs> like that's so much easier we might just call it a liver break day say what we're grateful for make something nice for my son something that he likes so I am excited because the 369 cleanse is coming up after the holiday so I'll just use this coming up time to prepare then I'll be really supporting my liver doing this cleanse that really helps the liver and just 
seeing what happens. And I've already seen people doing it on Instagram and posting their results and how it's going. And, and it sounds like it's not necessarily easy, but it does have great results for, for the liver and like the skin. If you're having skin issues, one person posted that she was having a skin flare up and then she did the 369 cleanse and already in just those nine days that her skin got clear again. So she was really excited about that because she said she'd been flaring for a couple months and I'm like, ooh, just like me. <laughs> I've been flaring for a month or two. Now, when I say I'm flaring, I want to be clear about that as well. It is nothing like when I was my sickest, okay? It is not even close. It doesn't touch it. I am still able to do things throughout my day. I might have a little bit more brain fog and a little bit more fatigue, but I can still get my day done, you know, by making all the foods and getting our supplements in and stuff like that and, and whatever I need to do in my day. I might not be like at my peak point of energy. I'm definitely not, but I'm, it's nothing, nothing like it used to be when I was just full on viral and flaring all the time. It's so much better now. What I see when I'm trying to make a video, these two little goobers, whoop, there he goes. Oh my goodness, wait, Middleton. Muffin says, come back up. Oh, he's gonna get her. He's gonna get her. Excuse the tripod, but I'm trying to make a video right now. And I got these guys. I don't it's gonna get her. Mercury retrograde. Whew. So, just not even, not even close to how it used to be. So, just want to be really clear about that in case anyone's saying, "Oh, you're not really healing" or anything like that. Listen, healing takes time, <laughs> and I may be at like. I don't know, I'd say 75, 80% of what I was before I got all the way sick. But, and I am. Like, that's great news. That's freaking fantastic, considering I was in a wheelchair and I couldn't really walk anywhere and I had no energy to do anything, even take a shower, couldn't get out of bed. Like, it was, I couldn't even think, I couldn't anything. Like, it's not like, I was in a wheelchair, but I had all my cognitive abilities. No, I did not. I did not have all of my cognitive abilities. I was so brain fogged. I was so out of it. And I'm like 75, 80% now of where I was before I got super sick. But I'm healing a lifetime of what got me just to that level before that as well. So there's a lot of deep stuff and, and it's again, I think like the layers of an onion and each layer comes off and it lets a new layer come to the surface and come out to be healed. And that just takes time, like time, time, because there's different things going on. There is stuff deep, deep in our livers. Read, read the liver rescue book. Medical medium talks all about it. There's stuff deep, deep in our livers that has been there for decades that needs to come out safely. That takes time <laughs> and that is fine with me because I am healing and when I'm having a little flare because it's winter or whatever or flu season or whatever and stuff comes in the house, it's just a little flare. I know I'm still healing. I know it's going to pass. It's not a big deal, okay? Even if it was symptom-wise felt bigger and got bigger because, I mean, it got a little bigger and for my husband's kind of big right now. It's still going to pass. I know what to do to heal. I know the supplements to take is not going to keep me down and it's not going to get me down as far as being like, oh, this isn't working. I've been on this path long enough. I've been ingesting this information long enough that I have utmost confidence in it. I know it's working because I know why these things keep happening and then I just, I, I understand it. So it doesn't scare me at all. I just want to be clear about that. Healing takes time. It's okay that it takes time. 
it can some of the things that we're healing can take years like neurological stuff can take a lot longer than other stuff and it just and it doesn't mean because it'll take this long for me it'll take this long for you it could be longer it could be shorter we all have different bodies and different toxin levels and all that stuff so just know you know because some people can heal their skin in like less than a year and they're and that's like their main issue is their the dermatoxins coming out their main issue is acne or psoriasis or whatever and they don't have a whole host of other health issues with it and so they can heal a lot faster it also depends on the toxins in your environment like what else do you have coming in at you all the time when I was on the road in the RV traveling in like sort of a high stress situation not really but I mean it kind of you know travels a little bit stressful but when you're in an RV traveling for like a year you get a rhythm and a routine about it and it doesn't seem that stressful anymore but still there's diesel fumes and diesel exhaust that stuff goes into your liver and the fires that people are burning in places and and then the water quality is different everywhere I mean we had the Berkey filter but nobody had water like this water <laughs> like nowhere we traveled until we got to Wisconsin had hard water like crazy hard water to the point where it leaves lime deposits on everything or I don't know if it's lime but like mineral white and chalky heavy silty mineral deposits on everything I can't imagine what the pipes must look like and the building that we live in as far as we can tell does not have a water softener we learned in the RV when we got to Wisconsin that for hard water you need a water softener and all a water softener really is is a filter that adds salt to the water but that softens the water yay science um, <laughs> it makes it so it doesn't destroy your pipes basically which is great because we didn't want that to happen in the RV but then when we moved into the apartment they don't have that here I don't know why because it's gonna ruin their own buildings pipes but whatever so no water softener and the Berkey just doesn't do really well with hard water and I don't think that's Berkey's fault I think that's water quality of here's fault and so who knows what's actually getting through into our water so toxins are accumulating also they do things here like clean the carpets in the hallways and we can't escape that because even if we have everything closed that chemical stuff still seeps in through the crack in the bottom of the door it just does it's you know chemicals are gases and when they evaporate you breathe them in whether you can smell them or not <laughs> but I'm always very aware of when they clean the carpets because I can feel it I get a little bit of brain fog on those days so that's adding to my toxin level and then when the weather is warmer this is the one great thing about winter is they stop spraying no pesticides all winter yay unless unless there's a rodent in the building and they still don't spray they use poison it's horrible if I ran the zoo it would not run like this I'll tell you that but I don't and these are things that you have to deal with when you live in an apartment sometimes which is why we're so keen to get back into a house and buy a house again because then at least we can control a very small area around our house and <laughs> like our yard and whatever but it's hard it's hard because you know you have neighbors and they'll use pesticides if you know it's just it's not fun and people don't understand like yay Monsanto did get sued and they did lose that lawsuit and they did have to come out and you know admit that oh yeah we knew round roundup causes cancer and we knew that these chemicals cause cancer and we totally suppressed the information and but you know people don't want to believe that even though that's like straight up hey this is proven this is science and they totally admitted it in court and they lost the lawsuit because of it because they killed a guy basically more than one person for sure but he figured it out took him to court and he's a hero because he was exposed to all those chemicals and he didn't know because most people don't know anyway that's like a whole nother tangent but yeah environments can be more toxic uh, this carpeting in here is really hard on me that's why we run the IQ air filter in this bedroom and uh, that's why a lot of times you might see like at the beginning of me making a video my skin might look a little clearer but by the end of the video my skin looks redder when I'm in this room and it's because I react to this carpet <laughs> I have, like it's an issue for me so there's all kinds of indoor air toxins that when you're in winter are coming at you and sometimes you can't escape them and it's just how it is and your liver has to deal with all that so that's what my liver's going through right now and that's what's up with my skin 
that's what's happening here. And I have been meaning to do this video for a while and talk about it, but I thought, oh, this is a good opportunity because it's flaring and getting kind of worse. Actually, it was worse yesterday. Believe it or not, it was like bad yesterday. I thought, oh, I look hideous. This, I should do it today, <laughs> but I didn't get a chance. So it's a little bit better today, but it's still pretty not, not good. It has definitely been better recently and it will be better again in the future. And we'll see what happens when I do the 369 cleanse. Like even in this environment, is it gonna be enough to, cause three, six, it's nine days and I'm like, is that gonna be enough time to really kind of clear things out and get stuff and we'll see if it is, then I'll probably keep doing it or some variation of it. Cause I, I do wanna support my liver. I really do, it's very important to me. When you read in the liver rescue book about like all of the things that the liver does for us, our whole lives, like how hard it works for us and just, keeps going and going and going no matter what we throw at it until it can't anymore. I mean, you just want to cry and apologize to it and hug it and say, I'm sorry, I didn't know, I didn't know. And we didn't know, but now we do. And that's the good information. That's the good news is that now we do. Now we do. <laughs> so that is what I wanted to share with you this week. I kind of did talk about what I'm eating. I have been eating, it's a mixed bag because sometimes we've been running out of things a little bit more lately and so there's not as much supply in the house for me to make salads every day but I've been trying to at least have some kind of greens when I eat the cooked food and on days when there are enough for me to do like salads and stuff I'll have raw till four. And some days I don't but at least I'll have raw food with my cooked food. I've mostly been eating raw dinners, but then sometimes I'll have smoothies for dinner. My favorite adrenal smoothie, which is coconut water, one cup of coconut water, two big handfuls of spinach, and the equivalent of two or more frozen bananas. And I blend it all up in the Vitamix and it's delicious. I love it. And it's a quick, easy, either adrenal snack or sometimes dinner. When I was talking to my friend Rosalind about this, she said, maybe you can just have an extra celery juice before bed and that'll help with some of the hydration and it'll also help you have energy the next day. Because she said, remember, you had to stop doing that when you were eating all raw because it was too much energy and it was interfering with your sleep. And I said, oh yeah, that's right. But now I'm eating a lot more cooked food, so celery juice before bed would be probably a really good idea because I already get up in the night to pee a bunch of times. So it's not, not a bunch of times, sometimes. Sometimes only once, which are like the best nights ever. And I'm like, well, I almost slept the whole night. Sometimes I even sleep the whole night, which is crazy and awesome. And other nights I'll get up like three times to pee. It really varies wildly, but yeah. So I think I'm gonna add that again. I'm gonna add the celery juice before bed. I just have to remember to do it because I keep, with this, it gets dark so early and my body is just like, oh, it's dark, let's go to sleep. And I'm like, um, it's like five o'clock. We can't go to sleep yet because I'll be up at like one o'clock in the morning or something. <laughs> like, not yet. We have to wait till eight at least, just eight. But I've been going to bed so early, like eight. I normally like to go to bed at nine. Like to me, that's kind of ideal, like nine, nine thirty. Anyway, but lately it's been like seven thirty, eight. I don't care. I get up at, and then I'll get up at like 4, 4.30, but it doesn't even bother me that I'm up early. It's just, I don't like to go to sleep so early. I've just learned to just listen to my body. If my body says go to sleep, I'm like, okay, I guess I will. Unless it's way too early and then I'm like, no, it's, I don't want to be up at two o'clock in the morning. No thanks. I'll just hold it. I'll wait it out. I'll wait it out. <laughs> But yeah, so I am, I am gonna do the celery juice before bed. That's kind of all about my food. And I think that's what I, what I really wanted to talk about was my skin. That's been like my big thing this week. So that's my Wednesday. How is your healing journey going? My beautiful healers and health seekers, I want to know, tell me in the comments. Have you been, well, I, I know I ask you this every week, like, are you struggling a little more? Cause it's winter because you probably are. I mean, maybe you're not, and if you're not, that is freaking awesome. But if you are, you're not alone. And just know that it's okay. It's just kind of part of winter. Just give yourself a little extra support. Even if you're having a flare, just remember you're still healing. It doesn't mean it's not working. It doesn't mean you're doing something wrong. And if you need some tweaking, maybe you need some tweaking, but 
just keep taking in the information. I don't mean my information, I mean the medical medium information. Like, you don't have to watch my videos. What matters is you get the right information from the medical medium, and he's got it all out there. Just keep solidifying the information whatever way you need to, because that helps. And don't forget, don't forget to use the angels and to use the meditations because those things are so important because they really do help us on our healing journey because calming down our nervous systems and quieting that fear and knowing it helps so much in our healing process because if we're panicking all the time and we're worried all the time and we're scared all the time guess what that triggers adrenaline to flood the body guess what adrenaline does feeds the pathogens that are making us sick so we don't want to live in fear and panic and have that fight or flight going and have that adrenaline going through our body we want to relax and just know we're okay right we want to know we're healing we want to feel that like relief and comfort and just like it's cool it's just part of the journey it's all right it's important it is important it's important to our healing so tell me how you're doing thank you for so much for watching this video my healers and health seekers stay curious you can heal and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. You can subscribe to my channel by hitting that subscribe button down there and there's a little bell next to it if you want to be notified when I post a new video. You can ding the bell and it will notify you. Again, I appreciate your presence. I love you and I will see you next time. Bye bye.